आज मैं ये आश्वासन देना चाहता हूं कि भारत की G20 अध्यक्षता इंक्लूसिव एम्बिशियस डिसिसिव और एक्शन ओरिएंटेड होगी As the mother of democracy, India's G20 presidency will be consultative, it will be collaborative, and it will be decisive. We are living in unprecedented times. Arrogant nations, known for their dictatorial regimes, are falling in line. Here's how: China. known for its autocratic governance has been marred by weeks of violent protests against stringent covid restrictions beijing's failure to inform the world about the outbreak of the pandemic back in 2019 itself put the world at risk and its brutal restrictions over another outbreak are now exploding in its face so what forced china to drop its weapons before its citizens Caught off guard by the outbreak of protests across the country over stringent COVID-19 restrictions, including brutal lockdowns, Chinese authorities have now begun loosening some of the restrictions placed on its population. The protests and the paranoid lockdowns, partial or complete, that have been in force in various provinces across the country for close to three years now, seem to have exhausted the patience of the Chinese masses. which have risen in revolt for the first time since 1989 that is a stark admission of failure from the normally smug and hubris fueled chinese authorities the first feeling that came to my mind when i witnessed the incredible protest across china was the spirit of 1989 has come again after 33 years Across the country, protesters are conducting night vigils, holding up black sheets of paper as symbols of protest. Workers have been escaping from factories placed under a closed-loop approach that has turned workplaces into virtual prisons. The Chinese way of dealing with COVID-19 has contrasted sharply with the rest of the world, particularly in open societies like India. That brings us to India. I mean, countries are struggling, and in this, those who have the confidence, the experience, the capability to speak out, it's important that they do, that they don't go with the with the tide, uh, so to speak, and to ensure that you know, I I think voices of reason, of sanity, of sobriety, uh, are needed uh, at this point of time, uh, and uh, certainly uh, I see India as such a voice. What worked in favor of a democracy like India, which has a humongous population nearly equal to that of China, was a more humane approach and faith in science. India too had lockdowns, but cities and towns were not turned into prisons. The Indian government was transparent in communicating with its people about the infectious nature of the epidemic, making the wearing of masks in public places the norm, advising social distancing. turning hospitals into covid wards and hotels and guest houses into isolation facilities and setting up field hospitals accommodating lakhs of patients simultaneously as the large section of the world majorly the west stockpiled vaccines india reputed to be the pharmacy of the world got its scientists to work on vaccines and within months two production centers serum institute of india and Bharat Biotech produced two vaccines separately as much as 94% of the population has received at least one jab of the vaccine and 86% has been fully vaccinated i would say our uh, reputation as the pharmacy of the world also has grown openness so you know the to uh, uh, to looking at indian produce made in india or produced by indian company medicines has grown that is the second part of the hub there are islands 
in Central, in the Car Caribbean, in specific, uh, in in parts of Africa, where actually vaccines were made much closer to them, but they didn't get the vaccines from those centers. They actually got it from us, and we saw also the difficult side of the world. There were countries who stockpiled vaccines at that time. You know, who sometimes had stockpiles which were multiple size of their population. India's approach of depending on its scientists to fight COVID has been widely recognized and appreciated, as well as its helping poorer countries, both in the neighborhood and elsewhere in the world, has been lauded by international organizations. After due deliberation, we have therefore taken up Vasudhaiva Kutumbakam, or One Earth, One Family, One Future, as our G20 Presidency theme. The G20 Summit in Bali marked the end of the Indonesian Presidency and heralded the group's Indian leadership for the new term beginning December 2022. India also assumed the presidencies of the United Nations Security Council and the Shanghai Cooperation Organization. Prime Minister Narendra Modi struck a note of confidence about India, playing an effective role in dealing with multiple challenges including geopolitical tensions and a global economic slowdown. India, home of 1.3 billion people, is a confluence of religions, traditions and customs. A thriving global center of technology and the world's largest democracy. As one of the oldest civilizations in the world with a rich cultural heritage and diversity. And as the fifth largest economy in the world, India is proud to assume the presidency of G20. G20 is a grouping of the major developed and developing economies. It includes China too. On more than one occasion in recent months, India has been hailed for holding its head high amid looming global crises. Be it when Indian ambassador Ruchara Kamboj asserted at the UN that India need not be lectured on democracy. We don't need to be told what to do on democracy. India is perhaps the most ancient civilization in the world, as all of you know. In India, democracy had roots going back to 2,500 years. 2,500 years. We were always a democracy. Or, be it when Indian External Affairs Minister Dr. Subramanim Jai Shankar shut down Western hypocrisy over India's choices. What issue is it that the West wants India to step up to the plate, so to speak. No, but why, why, should, I, why should I step up to what the West wants? I will step up to what I want, no? You think by voting for something I will end the war? You know, had I done all the things that you were saying, I would have been of no use to anybody, including myself in Bali. India has been reiterating its essential foreign policy goals, including equitable power distribution, need for better Global South representation in multilateral bodies, and enhance responsibility bearing for middle powers to reduce reliance on major powers like the United States and China, which have caused immense harm through their increasing strategic competition. Now the question arises, as the G20 presidency promises to help advance India's multipolar worldview and create a credible partnership between nations, will China learn its lesson and understand the value of democracy.